Welcome to Circle of Hearts Radio. Journey with Grandmother Alaya as she enters her magical world of relics, sacred sites, and ancient crystal skulls. Meet with exciting trailblazer authors and individuals shifting the consciousness of humanity. Send her your questions to be answered on air on her monthly segment, Ask the Oracle. And now your host, Grandmother Alaya, in this sanctuary on the airwaves on Home Times Radio. Welcome. Oh, great. So, sorry. Is Sandra we, there? Uh, well, we got Sandra so there? Far, sister. No. Okay. Not hi, hi Grandmother Laya. All right. Well, we've got you, sister, uh, as okay, everyone baby. can hear, because we're on air, <laughs> oh, is uh, oh. today, today's a uh, interesting day. And, of course, that kind of follows through. I've got two really interesting, wonderful souls coming on. i got one of them, and we're trying to get the whole, you know, about the other one. Sister Jaguar, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you, Grandmother Laya. That's good. That's good. Don't mind me. My voice sounds like gravelly. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I, my old age oh. last thing. Oh. So it, um, I see Doris trying to get hold of Sandra. So um, okay. let's just you and I go go for it. All right. All right. Sure. So, oh, Very Sandra's good. here now. Okay. So if we have Sandra, I'm going to um, have her introduce herself, okay? And we'll start off, and then I'll grab hold of you, sister. Okay. All right, Sandra, are you on the line? Yes, I am. You can hear me okay? Yeah, we're good. Everything's good. good. Uh, Okay, great. Well, I'm Sandra. I stopped breaking out in a sweat. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Sorry to cause you concern. No, 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 no. I'm getting used to this. <laughs> so, Sandra, okay. I, I, I had introduced both of you on the promos, promos a dynamic duo, because uh, anybody that can get, you know, sister out on the Amazon, I'm gone. This has to be a special soul contract. So yes. tell me a yes. little bit about yourself, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, well, I'm 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 a teacher and an educator. I my background is in um, as I call myself a communication philosopher, and um, I I have the great I have had the great privilege of going to the Amazon and um, spending time in the Achua culture, and I have found it to be very beneficial for myself and many others. And I had the great privilege of taking Sister Judy to the Amazon and witnessing a tremendous transformation, a tremendous emotional and spiritual transformation, a great spiritual awakening. Yeah, that's what they say. You know, sometimes you'll meet somebody in life. Um, Sometimes, you know, do a soul contract. Sometimes the person passes through. Sometimes they remain friends and you, you grow together as, you know, uh, people teaching. But uh, how how in the world should you meet sister? <laughs> I mean, I love her. <laughs> she, uh, she was referred to me by a friend of hers I had who I had done some work in a school, and the woman had remembered me, and she thought I might be useful and Sister Judy's school. So Sister Judy hired me to come work with her teachers and to see how they could um, work as a more cohesive team. And I, um, upon visiting her school, I discovered that really it's not um, the teachers that were the problem. It was Sister Judy's problem. And um, her anger and her interpretation and her perspectives were so causing her so much trouble and the people around her so much trouble. And I also knew that there was not a simple psychological solution. I also knew that what was happening was this great bright light had been, you know, her had been diminished. She was carrying a kind of trauma that I thought only the natural world could help her heal. I know that uh, when I had Sister Judy on 
last year. And she is such a gem. Like I said, I love her. But I can imagine you two facing off. <laughs> you know, yeah. reading her book, you know, her personality was one thing. And then, you know, at, by the end of the book, she's this expansive part energy. So you had yeah, your hands full. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. She's Sister Judy. She's a force to be reckoned with. She's a force of the natural world herself. <laughs> I hear you. You see, we're, pick, we're picking on you, and, Sister and Judy. We're running. <laughs> she, or, you know, some people are born with just a tremendous capacity to impact, you know, and Sister Judy has impacted so many people's lives in such a significant and meaningful way. And, you know, when you're carrying that kind of energy, if it turns in on you, you're in trouble. Yeah, I, I, I see that, you know, it's, you know, all the the light suppressed, you know, and hidden gate affects you in a lot of ways. Some people call that, you know, the basis for the emotional depression. Yeah, you know, that's they, right. They put right. that and barrier. They, sometimes so, we don't really uh, understand Sometimes we don't understand who we are, what we're capable of, the impact we have on others. You know, it takes some time to sort all that out. And that's why it was so great that you, know, uh, you were able to, you know, bring her back and bring you back because your lives are very interconnected. You're, you know, you were involved with the book and also the um the movie. Yes. So, you know, bring it, bringing it out is um, a wonderful story. You know, yeah. like I said, I, when I had talked to Sister Judy last year, I said, I give her credit. You wouldn't get me to the Animus song. It'd be, you know, you're dragging and kicking me. <laughs> but she's <laughs> an adventuresome soul. <laughs> never say never, Grandmother. Never say never. <laughs> I know. Just never know, know. When, <laughs> when this spirit moves you. You just never know, you know. When that energy moves through you, you just never know what, what you're capable of doing. I know. Um, no, I know. I, when, I, I've gone. When do I get to put in here? Any time you want to. Oh, okay. Of course. Well, just a couple open. of things just, that I'm listening to here. One is um, that that I thought I knew everything. I mean, I nuns think they know everything anyway. And then I was a school principal, and who tells the principal anything? The principal's always telling everybody else everything, you know. And and uh, so it's in this mindset that that I knew. How can I go to this person to help me when she's 15 years younger than I am? And and uh, what could she, what could she know? And 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 then on top of that, then you have this other mindset that um, you want to get, you don't want to get hurt, and you want to get them before. I was constantly testing Sandra. Let's see if I could get her to reject me. It's such a fruitless, hopeless way of being when you get close to somebody and then you test them to see if you can get rid of them, and then you hope you do, and then you blame them because uh, you, you because they leave, and and it's just such a vicious circle and I was an expert at it and a lot of people are experts at it so it, it takes a special person and a special friend to, to hang in there and not not be hurt by it and and not give up on it and and uh Sandra certainly came at the right right time right time right person at the right time thank you Sandra yes. I was going to say you that's the truth both of you both of you just but in you know but I, I was just laughing. When it's so important when you say it takes a special person. You get the wrong person. And Sister Judy, you have been kicked off the boat. <laughs> You're swimming with the alligators. <laughs> but, uh, no. That's right. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm just joking. I think it's a beautiful, that's why I called you, the, both of you, the dynamic duo. They don't so, call me Jaguar uh, for nothing. And who knew Not that you would, uh, who who knew that you could go to nature and and you know find such healing? I mean, Sandra knew, but I didn't know. I, you know, here I am, a biology major, and I didn't even go to nature. And and I majored in ecology. And I mean, I went to nature probably for for enjoyment or beauty, but 
but it goes so 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 much deeper than than that into healing your soul yeah what i've seen and i mean we're going to be heading toward a uh, break soon but we'll follow through on this is uh there's a statement that for every disease there's a plant medicine you know whether it's emotional or whether it's physical and the amazon's known for that of these special i mean not even ayahuasca i mean i'm just talking about a lot of plant medicines that are available in the amazon i've seen for you know things like cancer and I find it fascinating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. one of the great tragedies, one of the great tragedies of our time is that there's still so many plants of that are undis- their properties, their healing properties are undiscovered, and we're using the rainforest, you know, like our like our um, Home Depot, you know, like a, a resource that you know, we can, a renewable resource, then it's it's not true, you know, you can't, you can't just go into the rainforest and not. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, Intuitive Life Coach and Energy Healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. I'm Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family. And then, boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle you to America, and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Well, we're back with uh, Sister Judy and Sandra Morris, the dynamic duo. I, I love that saying. Sandra, why, why the Amazon? Why not the, the Himalayas? Why not... Um, the indigenous areas of the United States. What drew you to the Amazon? Well, I mean, I, I, the Amazon called me really to tell you the truth. And the Amazon is the greatest biomass of living organisms on Earth. I mean, it is just this amazing, complex, still yet under um, discovered in terms of its potential in terms of its relationship with our human evolution, you know, they're still, they still, they're still counting, you know, they're still trying to cre- uh, create the names. What is it called when they, they don't even know all the plants yet. They haven't cataloged all the plants yet in the rainforest. And oh, so, right. and to go and to be a force of destruction. Yeah. You know, to cut trees down to create hamburgers for McDonald's. I mean, it's just, we just aren't, we just don't have our heart and our head in the right place, I don't think, when it comes to understanding who we are in the web of life in relationship to the natural world and the Amazon in particular. I know. You know, just, we're, the uh, Amazon is far more valuable to us than the fossil fuel that lies underground. I was just going to say, you and I are the same mindset. I know I've been getting involved with the water movement. 
and I, I, uh-huh. I've seen videos where in the Amazon they're having problems with this too, you know, with the pollution. So it's all over, but like you said, there's a, a wonderful natural resource and there's so much possibilities for healing energy. Why are we so stupid? <laughs> You know, and trying yeah, to do why are we so disconnected? Yeah, we're terribly disconnected. Um, you know, Sandra, it's showing me, up. It's, on one of our trips to the, to uh, Ecuador, Sandra took me to what they call the toxic tour, and it's um it's not where we go normally. It's it's in it's in Ecuador, but it's up to the northeast. It's and in the Copan so, region. Tell us what what it's like after the oil companies have come in and and take what they want or and get you know you can work for them and then move on and these people are certainly without um, everything without spirit without spirituality without um, clean water they're they're they're, they're dead and and, and listless lifeless and. And the Achuar know about these other these other tribes, and uh, they don't want it to happen to them. It's horrible. Oh no, I think I was going to say that's part of the you know importance of bringing this journey out. I mean, first of all, it's sort of two parts. It it shows when you really look at it, it, it shows um, two people meeting of her helping bring you out to, you know, your own uh, spiritual awakening. I mean, you had many, many, because of your, you know, devotion, you had one perception, but she brought you out into the natural world, which opened up almost like a shamanic, you know. Exactly. Uh, open and gave you. So exactly. Also with this story, they they tell you about the problems in the Amazon. You know, it's not just about ayahuasca. It's about these people, what they need. I mean, unless you bring exactly. up stories that no one knows that they exist. You know, we got our heads in the sand. I know a lot of times I do. Yeah, so, it's a wonderful um, story. And, and, um, and I, I went back only as far as, is organized religion, you might say, a couple thousand years um, to the Catholic Church, or in the, the structure, any structure probably would not have have uh, done well with me because I just resisted authority so much. So then, when you have a male-dominated uh, structure called the Catholic Church, it's not going to sit well with me. But but the shaman, the shamanic. His, to go back thousands and thousands of years, back to, and I don't think the Atua are perfect, and, and there certainly is, um, you know, some sort of power somewhere. But 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 they don't have that that power down since they, they have a much more of a collegiality and a mutuality and a way of deciding things together in community, and um, and their spiritual practices uh, re- reflect that. And and it, and it and it just meant a lot to me then, and it means a lot to me now. And I think a lot yes. of people like me are searching be, beyond, further back than organized religion to uh, to to indigenous ritual. That's that's true. Even we also um, in some of the talks that you know I've had with people. We try to get people to take a time out of their day and create a, sort of a ritual, whatever makes important to you, where you connect through prayer to source, you know, that divine connection mm-hmm. where you talk. I mean, you could have follow certain rituals, you can have certain things, but it's it's a personal experience. And uh, I see more people coming to this. You know, they're following what they're drawn to. So it's good to hear, you know, stories like this because, you know, then people saying, oh, you know, other people are doing this too, you know. 
that they don't feel so, you know, alone or wondering. But um, just, just, just the whole idea where the actual look at God as uh, from a feminine, from from uh, from Pachamama, from Mother Earth, and I was looking for mother uh, love, the love of a mother, and um, search. I think we all kind of have always searched for that since the moment we were born, whether we got it or not. You know, that's a different story. But but uh, the whole idea of a feminine uh, source of nurturing and life giving healing and was just a whole different um, way of looking at God wanting to be a, 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 a giver of abundance rather than a judge and of and someone who some so, uh, condemning condemning your behavior wanting to accept you as who you are it was a huge change in theology for me well i mean true you know from all your experiences and but the world is changing it's opening up to the divine feminine and it's many forms and it's many faces you know in different relations and uh, like you said it's a the, the mother is the nurturer, the one that gives birth. You know, yeah, the, sometimes talks I have, you know, I, and the men are changing too. You know, it, it, they're fighting their own patterning. So, you know, it's a great time to bring up these stories, you know, and uh, people are understanding it. It's not so much rejection, you know, on that. But, you know, I was I was in a circle with Sandra, and uh, we were talking, the visitors who were there, about 10 of us, and Sandra, as always, figures out how to get people to start talking about community and, and themselves and how to uh, forgive each other and heal each other. And the shaman who was st- sitting there says, um, kind of raised his hand, and he says, uh, um, you know, when I go home, I'm going to... I'm going to tell my wife that I'm sorry. And to me, I about fell right off of the bench, you know, and I thought, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I came 3,000 miles and waited 3,000 years to hear a shaman, an older shaman say, well, I'm going to go home and tell my wife I, I'm sorry. And uh, I, I, that's a, what could be more profound than that? That's, that? that's the depth I was looking for. Yeah, because usually shamanism in certain countries and even in the states and some indigenous is male orientated it's interesting in mongolia the women are the shamans so it seems you know it depends on where you are in the world and uh for the americans the women are the medicine healers so you know they have a strong point but a very strong influence on the community, but they haven't been able to pretty much step out. But then the grandmothers, I've noticed, are uh, being more recognized. So it's all happening. You know, it's, it's all good. Yeah. So the um, people are so curious, and it's not that, you know, Anytime something, you know, comes out like ayahuasca, you know, it's like, oh, what's this, you know, what does it do? Can one of you just pretty much let them know that this is a spiritual experience? Well, you know, ayahuasca, well, you know, ayahuasca, it's medicine, you know, and so anytime, not everybody needs the same kind of medicine, but it's it's definitely medicine for the soul. We don't even understand that in our medical system, that, you know, all all sickness starts with something other than perhaps maybe we understand. And to have a kind of cosmology that reaches deep in to the evolution of our being and and to understand that the plant world is deeply related to us and wants to help us and heal us. And that's all that ever has really helped us and healed us, that which has come from the natural world. But we're so, we have such a strange relationship with medicine and healing. I mean, shamanism is the oldest form of healing on earth. And so 
for us in the modern world, in the Western world, to come back and to begin to recognize that perhaps maybe some of these ancient medicines not only will heal our body and our mind, but really heal our soul, which allows us to have a deeper kind of healing within our own self, you know. I always tell mm-hmm. people before you have to, before you drink ayahuasca, and I don't care who you are, you have to deal with your relationship with fear. And so much, we're so contracted, we're so fearful, we're afraid of ourselves, we're afraid of each other. I mean, we have so much, we're so dictated by fear, we don't even, we don't even know where to begin to deconstruct it. It's so much a part of our cultural narrative in the United States, we're fed it in the media, we're fed it by each other, we have so much fear. So I I appreciate ayahuasca because it makes people really deal with and step into how fearful they are and how much fear governs them. So in some ways, I think that ayahuasca is the medicine to help deconstruct your fear. Hmm. Uh, Sister Judy, you got anything to add on that one? Well, I just am amazed every time Sandra talks. Um, no, that that whole idea. You know, every, when I approach ayahuasca, when I approach grandmother, um, all right, we're yeah, going better. We'll continue. Better, okay, we'll be back. <laughs> okay, okay. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Hello, join us, Lisa Berry and Michelle Carter, every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for the Mindset Makeover, What's Possible? Get ready to become present, clear and unstuck and start living fully, led by your heart. While you listen and feel this transformation through vibration of word, sound, and song, you'll open up to what's possible and experience your shift. Adopt U.S. Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. You've messed up your daughter's haircut. Do you, A, get spiritual. Mom, where's the mirror? Beauty is within. Oh. B. Find the positives. Less time blow drying, more time texting. Or C. Show empathy. Mom, you really don't have twinsies. I kind of love it. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on adoption, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Sister, getting back to what we were saying, why I asked you is because considering your background, did, um, uh, were you ever uncomfortable considering, well, I'm going to try this? Ever uncomfortable with what? Um, you know, that you were going to um, get involved in the experience of ayahuasca or concerned about what you would face or... Yes. It was something still, totally new. Yes, and I still am in that on a couple of levels. So, or, or on the level we were talking about before, the whole, whole idea of fear, um, all of that was so new to me. And and I, I, I trusted Sandra. I trusted when she said you need to come to 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 the jungle and meet grandmother, meet ayahuasca. Um, I trusted Sandra. I didn't trust me, or I didn't trust the ayahuasca and um and that whole idea of fear um i i I was afraid of losing control i wanted to stay in control and control the experience i don't want to control you me the world you know i I wanted to be in control and that whole idea of being afraid when you're not in control and that whole idea of surrendering is important And, and even i still um 
have a, a problem with with uh, how I embrace Iowa grandmother and ayahuasca. It's more, in some ways, more political within the church than the convent. I want I want to uh, be accepted. I want to fit in, and I don't fit in. I never have fit in. And uh, in some ways, I enjoy not fitting in. But it, again, I want to be a part of. I want the nuns to respect me, and I don't think they get me. I don't think they get what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, why I ever started it, uh, what it means to me, and and uh, that whole surrender is forever. And uh, fear can be forever too if you if you let it. Uh, so I I wish more. Nuns understood why I'm doing what I'm. I wish my own one of my own of my three brothers understood why I'm doing what I'm doing, and uh, so it, it 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 binds me to a wonderful, loving local community. But it also, in some way, has not yet um, um, allowed me to share it with with the nuns I I, I love, and maybe that will happen. I don't know if it will happen. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, you never know. People, I mean, you know, we've talked about this before, that uh, so, that was something I always aspired to being, but, you know, my mother had said no. So that's why I took different directions. But it's possible that secretly they they may actually wish, you know, uh, that they could overcome their own fears and be not as structured and more heart opened and you know follow their bliss like the you know the Buddhist would Buddhism would say. So, you know, maybe in time that, you know, you you have to be the trailblazer to say, see, you know, I'm still the same person but, you know, my heart's open more. I can share more. They might be a good example for, you know, those in very structured, you know, religious patterns because I I don't know if you agree with this, but when they go into it, it's because of, you know, the love of God of many different names or, you know, the, the love of people, you know, to be of service. So maybe, you know, seeing you, they can see, well, you know, there's more to life. So you're a rebel, Rousey. Good one, though. What do you, what do you say to that? Well, I mean, I, I, I agree with Grandmother Elia. I mean, I think that everybody in their own time, right? I think that right. people come to things differently in different times. I certainly appreciate the opportunity to represent this this journey, you know, and so thank you for that, Grandmother Elia. Thank you for that so much. Well, the thing is, people are interested in the journeys of other people. You know, sometimes when they see somebody and they say, oh, well, you know, I would never expect that of that person to do such a, such a thing. And it's such a beautiful experience. So once it's put out there, you know, it's more, well, okay, you know, maybe I can do this too. Unless people talk about it, communication, people are afraid. You know, they're they're always afraid of what somebody else is going to say. I mean, I've been there. Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, I think communication. Go ahead. I also think that um, that we need to really encourage each other in life to say yes. It's life. Life lives in yes. You know, there's so much more that happens when one says yes, right? Yes mm. to certain experiences. Yes to certain opportunities. Yes to forgive. Yes to love. Yes to be open. You know. Yes is where life is happening, and whether someone invites you to drink ayahuasca or someone invites you to a sweat or someone invites you to do something that has an element of risk in it or has an element of the unknown or uncertainty, you know, say yes, because the great awakening I think that we're coming into is that we're recognizing who we are for each other, you know. We are, we 
We are tribal. We belong to each other. We need each other. We wait and we see what comes alive in us when we meet each other, you know. When I met Sister Judy, what happened for me was some part of me that lay dormant until I met her woke up, you know. I woke up to my capacities to help and my capacities to heal and understand and have compassion and we don't we don't really understand who we are for each other until we have the practice of saying yes, you know. We need to say yes, yes to life, yes to each other, yes to the energies that heal us and gather us, you know. We need each other and we we are awakening to the fact that we're there's not so much cachet and agency in being so independent. The recognition is that we're interdependent. We need each other. We desire each other. We're best off with each other. So I also think that we need to spend some time reflecting on the yes. That's true. And people mm-hmm. are so so afraid. So yeah, there we go. Fear, uh, right? We yes. Fear. Yeah, I don't know. And I think yeah. it's you know so much in life. And what people if are afraid. afraid you know, and what if there's a collision? I mean, what if we bang heads or bang hearts or bang into each other somehow that, I mean, the, I always talk about the Big Bang in terms of evolution. You know, where would we be without the Big Bang? I, well, where would we be without without um, without our our um, values and 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 our rituals uh, colliding at, at times? Um, that, it's how okay. we learn. It's how we learn. The Big Bang creates. It, it's the source of creation. It's the source of learning. That's right. It's the source of healing. Energy. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. No, it's it, it, it's like I said, and for people to be able to hear responsible people talk, you know, talk about things and situations, and even getting back to the Amazon. To, for, I think it's important that people recognize to be discerning. And if you're interested in doing something, you know, about this, to find people that could help you do it. Just don't decide, well, I'm going to do this. And I think that's, yeah. again, like the thought of loss of control or, you know, what's going to happen to me or, you know, am I going to flip out or right yeah. now, yeah. Like, people society needs. The, the nice, the nice thing about ayahuasca is it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Right? You drink it, you have the experience. You know, it has a start, a middle, a finish. It's not, it's not the end of the world. It's four hours. No matter where you go, you're going to come back from it. It's not all that. You know, it's it's a little bit. It's a little bit. You know, people make it much more than it is until they've done it, and so. I just encourage people to relax and not add a lot more to it, even though you do have to walk through the portal and the gateway of fear. That's for sure, and that takes a tremendous amount to do. Do you find all age groups in your um, in the people that are approaching you? Is it you know all young people or, or some middle age? Oh group no, or? no, not at all. No, not at all. Um, there's uh, uh, no, not young. As a matter of fact, most of the people I take to the jungle are not young people. Most of the people I take to the jungle are, you know, in their fifties, sixties, and seventies. So, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. So it, it's um, wow. <laughs> the desire. To, the des- so ayahuasca is a purgative. It helps you to let go of the energies that you're carrying that no longer serve you. And as we age, we recognize we're carrying things that we really need to let go of, but the egoic mind is so strong, it's so hard to let go of parts of ourselves that we don't even, you know, we have some kind of intuitive understanding that, geez, I wish I could break through this particular pattern, or geez, I wish I wasn't such a prisoner in my own, you know, emotions, gee, I wish I had more agency over my own self, but we don't recognize that those are energies that have kind of a that that exist out beyond our ego and so it's nice to be able to have a moment in time when you take some medicine and that medicine helps you release those energies that you don't need to be carrying anymore so it's quite potent it's quite powerful experience you know 
So oh, I, I, I just think it's good medicine. I was going to say it sounds totally symbolic of the awakening process people are going through right yeah. now. But in her yeah, flame it, of, the, um, excuse me, keep losing my voice. In her flame of something, um, there's something more that there's missing. And like I said, it's interesting you said, you know, the age groups. I guess there's hope for me yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's hope. We'll but, take good uh, care of you. Come down with us, Grandmother Eliya. We'll take good care of you. And um, I up, want to... Um, I just want to um, thank you for having, for inviting me and Sister Judy on your show. And I'm going to sign off here and let you finish the last 20 minutes with Sister Judy. So thank you very much for having me and having us oh, both. Sandra. Uh, that was really <laughs> a pleasure. I'm glad you got back on. <laughs> yeah. Yes, cool. me too. And I'm happy to come back anytime you invite me. So thank you. Have a good day. Okay, thanks, Sandra. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Grandmother Hi. Okay, oh, she she won't be going on. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, we go. We'll come back. Okay. your soul with waves of consciousness on ohm times radio the number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-saharan africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products the pads for school girls project an outreach of humanity healing international is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools teaching girls a vocational skill while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes the girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the Conscious Awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness and action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. Hey, this is Reva McIntyre, and I wanted to talk to you about a serious problem right here in our own backyard. Did you know that there are nearly 16 million kids struggling with hunger in America? That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks collects surplus food, engaging their communities in solving hunger and giving hope to hungry kids and their families. But they need your help. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. Sister and Judy, I tease you a lot, but I, I've been thinking you're all uh, awesome lady. Um, well, in this past year, what have you been up to? Well, let me first let me tell you why I think Sandra left. That was unusual. I didn't know she was going to go, and uh, and I know why she went. And uh, we have every Sunday morning here, our local community has a, a dance. Um, I call it sweating, sweating your prayers. And they have this kind of a mm-hmm. modern dance where you start slow and then it gets into this crazy chaos music and then it ends up in a meditative music. And she and her husband, Michael, started this dance with one or two people about a year and a half ago. And to make a long story short, there's probably 70, 80 people that come every Sunday to the, to do this dance prayer, this dance. It's kind of the new church on the block. And um and Michael gets the music together, and and uh, and they have this group. And I'm sure that she was interviewing. I couldn't believe, first of all, that she even did the interview in the middle of sweating your prayers. <laughs> and um, I'm sure she was dancing, left, went and spoke with us out in the parking lot, and ran back in at the end of the dance so she could be part of 
this community, your community, and part of the dance community. And that's kind of brings you back full circle to ayahuasca. I never would have met. Some of these people do ayahuasca. Most of them don't. Most of them haven't heard of it yet, but uh, and they probably will. Um, but it's a very uh, broad community that we have here in Tucson. And um, I'm just very fortunate to be a part of it. And, and it's just a new, it's a new church. It's a new way of being with people of all different ages and, and backgrounds, a new way of, of holding sacred space that I never, ever, ever had the experience of, of being a part of. I th- <clears throat> That's really awesome because I do see people changing. I see even some of the stuff that I do. People just coming together, you know, disregarding, you know, they come together purely just to come together, you know, they're forgetting the labels, well, this person's this, this person's that, they come from this religion, they're this race, whatever. And communities are being created just purely out of love and everyone's saying, hey, we're going to do the same nonsense. You know, we've got to do something about this. And, That's right. Um, when you were saying, you know, I'm, I mean, uh, what, um, go ahead. To go ahead. along with, with what you're saying there, that I get, I get, you know, I always worry what people think, you know, and I'm always worried about I can't change it and I can't fix it, but, and, um, and I get on uh, our, our book, Sanderson, my book is on Amazon.com and they have reviews. So every day I get on to see what people have written about Sister Jaguar's journey. And the other day, yesterday, somebody wrote, oh, I can't believe she's a nun and she shouldn't be a nun and she has no business being, I'm not Catholic, this woman says, but she's not Catholic and, and uh, she's a witch and she's Wicca, Wicca this and I wouldn't know. I'm just like, I wouldn't know a Wicca witch, and I wouldn't be against a, a Wicca witch. If somebody asked me, oh, then she says, oh, well, she's Buddhist. I'm sure a Catholic can't be Buddhist. So, first of all, I know a lot of nuns, and a lot of Buddhism is not a religion, and there can be a, a, a Buddhist Jewish person, or a Buddhist Catholic, or a Buddhist Mormon, or Buddhist Muslim. It's not a religion. And, and hear, then I get so down about some stranger I never knew that bashed me uh, about my book. And then I'm like, I'm like, what, why do we do? I hope I wish a Buddhist, I wish I could meet a Wicca and and get invited. I wish I could go to a sweat lodge. I wish I could have an experience of all these. Uh, I had a Jewish friend who who I said, I want to go to the church with you. And she said, well, first of all, you have to call it a synagogue. On a church, and you can't. Clap. I said, "Oh, I will clap." And I went, and she stood up and chanted the Hebrew. And I didn't know she was going to chant the Hebrew. And the, the Hebrew, and I was got first came in my eyes, and and I watched them congratulate her afterwards, and I saw how proud her husband was, and and I was just floored at my friend who who chants, you know, the epistle. I don't know what the how, you know, at the at the uh, at the synagogue, and. I was so proud of Raina and so happy to be a, a part of her life and her ceremony. And it, and uh, I, you know, I was just, I just think we ought to embrace each other's rituals and, and quit condemning each other for them. Yeah, I, but I think you know when people start actually talking, I even notice myself sometimes. <clears throat> I'm just like you. You know, I'll see something, somebody will criticize something that I said or, you know, about me. And, and you know, I'm sorry, my throat's going. I, you know, I get hurt. And you want to close up. And it's like, oh, why am I bothering and all this other stuff? Uh-huh. And then it's kind of just step back and go, well, they're going to their own things. You know, maybe this. But I always remember, and they're drawn. Well, I mean, even the woman may have not understood, but she was drawn to read your book for a reason. You know, Hmm. so, you know, some Hmm. connection will be made, you know, maybe sometime in another time or, you know, in a year or something, you know, she'll start to understand. But, you know, her Mm -hmm. words, what she said now, she was actually drawn. 
to yeah. read this information, just like you and Sandra were drawn to be together. Yeah. So, you know, there's yeah. hope. <laughs> <laughs> and I created so, it. Know, I wanted. To, I wrote the book. I wrote the book to create an edge. And now that I've created an edge, where where a nun can say, you know, I needed to do ayahuasca in order to find creator spirit in order to find God. I created. I wanted to make that edge known, and now it's known. I can't be fearful that that's that's where I'm standing on an edge. Okay, that's that's where change happens is on that edge. We should all stand on an edge. I hope. Yeah, no, it is. And like I said, the people that are at the stand on the edge first, you're always waiting for somebody to push you off. <laughs> it, it's hard, jump but it, it's your, yeah, it, it is your sole purpose. You know, you, yeah. If yeah. you do more right than, there's no right or wrong, but, you know, we still put things in labels right and wrong. But it really is all good. Uh, you're still working with kids, or? Uh, grandmother, you have a new classroom that I never had. And I spent 50 years in a classroom teaching. And now I'm sitting here in my bedroom with a broken leg talking to you in your classroom. Of you're, we're teaching together. We're, we're teachers today and learners. And, and uh, the people listening in are are learning and listening and, and uh, it's a new a new classroom for me and I and a platform and just as Sandra gave a whole new uh, eco justice platform to stand on you've certainly given me and Sandra and others uh, this this communication spiritual platform in which to connect and uh, I'm so grateful thank you for your thank you for your gift I should just be thankful and not jealous huh <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's true. The internet. I had always thought of, um, like, I have a lot of Buddhas and Kuan Yin's and in the home, a lot of spiritual items, and I always planned to have a sanctuary, my physical home. Well, that uh -huh. doesn't seem to have worked out. But then the other the door opened for the internet, you know, and I stuck my and saying, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. But it does allow a farther reach. Uh -huh. And for sure does. people to hear the stories and to connect with regular people on different points in their life. And I think that's so important. So that's, you know, like I said, I teach you a lot, but, you know, I really do admire you. Like I said, I'd never get on one of those boats. I keep on looking at your picture. I'm going, nah, not me. I'll fall off the boat. I'll be, you know, an alligator. <laughs> no, we'll get, I'll go with you. Well, then we'll have to get a bigger boat for sure if I go with you. Sandra will take care of you in the jungle, <laughs> grandmother. <laughs> it, it would be fun. You know, never know. It's like, like she said, never say never. You never know where you're going to yeah, end up because I never know where I'm going to end up doing. Yeah. But, you know, I'm be really open glad she... Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've done yeah. things in these past years I never thought I'd be doing. <laughs> so what the heck, you know? Yeah. But, uh, I've gone five times. No, if anybody good. told me, I, if anybody would have told me I had go, I would go to the jungle five times, uh, to, to, to Ecuador five times to the village there. I would never, it was never on my radar. Never once was it ever on my radar. Never. So. Do you feel like that's a second home for you now? Very much so. I go, I just admit it. I go there every day, every way. I, admit I have my bedroom is all filled with beautiful photographs that I took when I was down there. And all I have to do is look around my room and I'm back there. I just go back to the sounds and the smells and the, yeah, I, I could be back there in a minute and in a meditative state. Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty good, you know. So it's it's a good it's thing good, you took that chance. It is really. because now I never would have ever perceived myself as being a cripple either or being immobile. I never imagined me as being immobile. Now, five years of pretty limited mobility. I my mind is certainly on the move. And um, I have those uh, that daily practice of meditation. I can move anywhere. I can go anywhere I want, anytime I want, in a meditative state. 
That's true. That's true. And they always, you know, they pretty much say, you know, the only time we're limited is when we put the limits on us. So, you know, it's it's good. We, all that's good, you know, for people to hear because, you know, yeah. it seems really yeah. listening to stories and communication does more than other things. You know, everybody's constantly game, don't do this, don't do that. And when you hear somebody says they're going to do it, yeah. it really inspires. So I really appreciate you and Sandra coming on. And uh, I'm going to thank you in touch with Dar about you, okay? <laughs> thank you for having us. Stay on the edge, grandmother. Stay on the edge. Okay, take care. Thank you, Sister Judy. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.